the great day of the Lord. Let me say it again. The day of the Lord's coming. Amen. Oh, the Lord will reign over this earth. I will ask my brother there if he can put Zechariah, hallelujah, Zechariah, chapter 14, hallelujah, suri kantare babashanda. And we'll start with verse 1. Church, I am totally convinced that we are living in the last days. There is nothing else that needs to be fulfilled. Every prophecy has been For some reason, my Bible doesn't want to open up right now. Has been fulfilled. The only thing that is left to be fulfilled is the rapture of the church. Now, the reason why the enemy has not taken reign of this world yet, it is because of you and me, the church. But when the church is taken out of this world, the Antichrist which is literally a son of the devil. He will be totally possessed by Satan. He will rise up on this earth. And we, as we read here, look what the word of God says. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Now the day of the Lord will, take, will, will, will be in two stages. At the end of the great tribulation and at the end of the millennial reign, when Christ himself with thousands of angels and his church will come literally back in the air and you and I will be there. Let me tell you something. God is coming back. Believe it. God cannot lie. He said, I will come back. I go to prepare a place for you, but I will return. So the day of the Lord is about to happen. Hallelujah. But of course we know that the only way that the enemy will reign on this earth totally is when the church is taken out. And I believe that every single day, it is closer and closer and closer. My brother, my sister, if Jesus tarries another 20 years, I will be certainly be very surprised at the way things that are happening in this earth. We just heard that Jerusalem now will be, hallelujah, and is recognized as the capital of Israel. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Now I want you to listen to this. Look. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. And that day when Jesus comes at the end of the great tribulation. The enemy will come against Israel with many nations. A great army will come with him. After he has conquered Russia and after he has conquered Germany, he will have all the power that he needs in his hands. And he will come against Israel. The Bible says that he will make a peace treaty with Israel for seven years. Do you understand? Israel will believe that this will be actually the Messiah. But the Bible says that after three and a half years of the great tribulation, he will break that priest treaty. And he will rise up with an anger, with a hate, hallelujah, to destroy Israel. And look what it says here. And the Bible says that half of Israel will be divided. It will be ravished. Homes will be looted, the Bible says. There will be Women will be violated. 
Look what it says. Spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. This is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah, uh, Zechariah. Go to the next verse, please. And look what it says. For I, who's doing this? The Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but my God is in control of my enemy. Hallelujah. The enemy cannot do anything unless God permits it. He believes, he, he knows that the lake of fire will be for him forever. He knows that. But he's not conformed to it. I believe that Satan will almost convince the Antichrist that they will be able to change prophecy. But let me tell you something. Heaven and earth will pass away. But Jesus said, my word will never pass. Jesus is coming back with power. Hallelujah. And he will destroy our enemy forever. And that day is coming. Joy. Get joy in God. Get happy. You are victorious. He said, look at this. God is going to do I will gather the nations. I will bring the nations of the world. Why? Because I've had enough of it. Because they rejected my son. Because they rejected my blood. Because they rejected salvation. Because I wanted to give them eternal life. And they refused it. The Bible says when you refuse truth, you will accept a lie. And more than ever, I am seeing this happening in our schools, in our government. Thank God for the man that we have in the White House. Thank God for Vice President Pence. Thank God that he proclaims God, that he prophesied it was fulfilled that Jerusalem is the capital of Jerusalem. I said I wasn't going to sweat. Look what it says here. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of God. Jerusalem is the city of our great God. Jerusalem belongs to the Jews. And God has given Jerusalem to them. And no one, absolutely no one will take away from them. Because the battle is of the Lord. Israel is, oh, God's precious, precious. Hallelujah. Oh, look at this. And the city shall be taken. Look at it. The enemy is going to come with many, many, many nations. Hallelujah. Is America going to be there? I don't know. And it doesn't really matter. What matters is, I'm already in heaven. <laughs> you, you, you mean you don't care about America? I love America. I love, I'm Portuguese, but I love America more than Portugal. I'm sorry. I'm, hey, Portugal never gave me Jesus, but I was told about Jesus in America. Hallelujah! Praise God! Hallelujah! Jerusalem, to battle, I will bring all the nations, and they shall be taken. And that Israel at that point will literally be taken by the Antichrist and all the armies that he brings against them. Do you understand? You see, that happens because they refuse their Messiah. But thank God, God is a merciful God. And look what he says here. And the houses raffled. In other words, they will be looted, the houses. They're, these armies are going to come in and loot the houses. Loot, loot them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue, the residue of people shall not be cut off from the city. God has a remnant, hallelujah, and he's going to take care of them, even in the great tribulation. When the enemy is about to swallow Israel, when Israel is about to be totally annihilated, Jesus will appear in the air. 
and he's not coming alone. He could because he doesn't need anybody, but we're coming with him and millions and millions of, of angels with him and we will be with the Lord for the day of the Lord is coming. My brother, my sister, raise your hands, lift your voice, rise up. The conqueror is with you. He has never lost and he never will and you will never lose. Hallelujah. Now verse, verse 3, please. Watch this. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against these nations. Hallelujah. Literally, the Lord Jesus is going to do battle. Hallelujah. How's he going to do it? He's going to do it with his word. He's going to do it with the sword of his mouth. Oh, hallelujah. Let me tell you something, my brother and my sister. The same power that is in Jesus, the same power that he had, that he used his word. The Bible says there is power of life and death in your word. You've got to stop confessing. You've got to stop proclaiming. When things are not going well, when it looks dark, when everything is in despair, rise up and begin to use the sword of the Spirit. Come against your enemy with the word of God. Hallelujah. There is power in the word. The word will change things. My word will go forth. Hallelujah. And it will accomplish my work. Don't worry about what's happening. Don't, 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 don't feel like you're losing because you never lose. With Jesus, we are more than conquerors. We are victorious. We know the end. We know who's going to win. You are a winner. I am a winner. Why? Because the Lord of hosts does battle for us. Amen. And the Lord shall go forth and fight against the nations as when he fought in the day of battle. In other words, when the Egyptians were coming after Israel, God did the battle. He said, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, be still. Be still and just believe. Proclaim your blessing. Proclaim the victory and it shall happen in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Go to the next verse, please. And it says, in his feet, I love this, will stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem. On the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave. In other words, literally will it will crack in the middle. Hallelujah. When Jesus puts his foot on the Mount of Olives, it's going to crack. Why? Because the remnant that God has needs a place to hide. And God will open a way for them to run through it. Oh, let me tell you something. Always God will give you a way out. Oh, he will never forsake you, no matter what you're going through. No matter if the army of the world come against you. Doesn't matter if Satan comes against you, if the world comes against you. God has made a promise that he will always be with you and will always give you victory. And the Bible says, hallelujah. In the midst of toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove towards the north and half towards the south. Do you understand what's happening here? This is powerful. When Israel is about to be totally annihilated, totally destroyed, that's when Jesus will appear, and he's going to put his foot on the Mount of Olives, and that mount will going to open up. 
Hallelujah. Why? Because he's God. Why? Because his word says so. Why? Because let everything be fulfilled according to his word. God is not a liar. God will not change his mind. What he said he will do. Young woman, young man. Hey, the life that you're living is a life of death. But if you get a hold of Jesus, you'll have life and life. I wish you could see my son at home. I wish you could see him. He's got a smile from one side to the other. All he wants to do, Dad, tell me more about Jesus. Dad, let's listen to another message. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm right now, I haven't had nothing to eat. And guess who did this? He did. He said, let's, let's fast, Dad. Me and you are going to fast the whole day. The whole day. The whole day. The whole day. Oh, this been a change. This been a change. The enemy told me I'll never surrender. I've got him. I'm never gonna let him go. But the Lord of Lords, the Lord of Hosts, the armies of the heaven. Hey, he stood upon the Mount Olives. Praise God. I said I was. Verse 5 with me, please. This will happen. Let me tell you. When is this going to happen? This is going to happen at the end of the great tribulation. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. That's the remnant. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. For the valley of the mountains to reach unto Israel. Ye shall flee, like as he fled from the before the earthquake in the days of Hosea the king of Judea. And the Lord my God shall come. Hey, he said he's going to come. And I'm telling you, he's coming. The, li the devil is a liar. This world lies to you. It's not going to happen. What we need is a new world order. No, what this world needs is King Jesus to come back and put it all in order. And he said, and God shall come with all of his, his, help me, his, he's going to come with who? With his saints. Do you know who that means? That's you and me. Oh, oh. I've rode donkeys, but I never rode a, a horse in my life. But thank God, I'm going to ride, I'm going to ride on a horse next to my Lord. And he's going to say, my son, the day has come when I will reign and you will reign with me. Do you understand? You're going to reign with him. You're going to reign with him. You're going to reign with him. You don't deserve it. But the blood of Jesus has bought you that right. And guess what? You are reigning with him now. Act like you reign. Stop complaining. Stop giving in to the enemy. Stop saying there's no way out. There's no way. I can't do it anymore. It's not going to work. My husband doesn't want nothing to do with God. My son doesn't want nothing to do with God. My wife doesn't want nothing. Never say that. Never say that because there is power in your word. And all of his saints. Hallelujah. I would like you to go now, please, to Revelations to continue this teaching. Hallelujah. Revelations, please. Chapter 19 and verse 11. Hallelujah. The same event now. The same event. Hallelujah. Chapter 19, verse 11. This is what is. This, look at I love, I love this verse. You know, when, when I was reading this, I, I sensed the Holy Spirit tell me, tell my people that heaven is about to open. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Who is this? Hallelujah. And he that it sat upon him was called faithful. Eh? Faithful? Eh? Our God is faithful. Let every man be a liar. 
but my God is faithful. What he said he's going to do, he will do it. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I could care less about the circumstances. I could care less if my son comes home drunk falling, but my God is powerful. And he said he would do it. I will never forget one day. Me and my wife, we were down. Our son was bad in drugs. Not only drugs, but everything else. And I went to a meeting. And I sat in the front seat, me and her. And there was a woman that was teaching. She all of a sudden stopped and said like this, Sir, that boy that's making you cry, that's keeping you up at night, he will bring much joy to you yet. <laughs> oh, come on, give God glory. I believe the heavens is about to open up. I believe it's opening up right here. Why don't you just take a, why don't you, a, heaven is opening up for you right now. Just ask the Lord whatever you need because he will do it. He will do it because he loves you and he wants the best for you. And I saw heaven open up. Behold the white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness does he judge and make? I don't know if you know, but our God is a God that makes war against evil. You understand? Evil will not prevail. Your enemy will not prevail. Your situation will not prevail. Why? Because God is about to do battle for you. He's about to do battle for you. Whatever it is you're going through, God is sending angels to do battle for you. Woo! Praise God. Praise the Lord. I love this. My God. Hallelujah. He is a righteous judge. Hallelujah. And he does war for his people. He's a great warrior. Go to the next verse, please. And his eyes were as what? Flames of fire. You see, John had seen Jesus in the beginning when it was revealed to him. Hallelujah. Do you remember when he said, I turned around and I saw him and his eyes were like what? Flames of fire. Hallelujah. But then John, and the Bible says, John, I looked and I saw door open in heaven and a voice from heaven said, come on up here. Oh, Rabbi, it's the rapture of the church. Come on up here. Because what's about to happen is not for you. You're my child. You're my beloved. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he had a name that no man knew. That's his first name right there. Nobody knows. But he himself, he's the only one that knows it. Go to the next verse, please. I'm about to end. And he was clothed with vestures dipped in. Dipped in blood. What does that mean, Pastor? It means... That the way you were bought, salvation came by the blood of Jesus. If it wasn't for the blood, the Bible says everything had to be sanctified by the blood. It is the blood. It cost Jesus his precious blood. We were bought with a price, not silver or gold, but the precious Jesus, the precious blood of the lamb. My son and my daughter, listen to what I'm saying. Put some value on what God has done for you. Don't throw it away. Don't take it as anything just happened. No, it cost Jesus his precious blood to cleanse you, to bring you here to sit in this praise God oh there is power in the blood and his name is called the word of God <laughs> what is his name he has a name that no one knows except himself but he's got another name which is called the word of God hallelujah not only does he have that name but he has another name written on his side it says king of kings and lord of lords 
Hallelujah. Verse 14, please. Hallelujah. And then the armies which were in heaven. <laughs> I don't know about you, but God has armies. Hallelujah. And they do battle for you and for me. God can send you an angel. He can send you an archangel to give you that breakthrough because every one of them are subject to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Oh, what a day that's going to be. I don't know. I've seen some beautiful horses on this earth. But, man, imagine the horses in heaven. Imagine what they're going to be like. The Bible says that Elijah was wrapped. In, 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 in a carriage of fire and horses of fire. That's why I'm on fire. Hallelujah. And heaven followed up on the white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. You know what that is? That's the rapture, the, 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 the festures of righteousness that Jesus has given his people. Hallelujah. Hey, we were all sinners. Nothing good was about us. But he, the righteousness of God, he put upon us. Hallelujah. And because it's upon us, it's a white linen cloth. Hallelujah. Clean, pure. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse, please. Hallelujah. And out of his mouth goes out a sharp sword that with it, hey, that with it should smite the nations. He doesn't have to take any, he doesn't have to get out. He doesn't even have to leave his horse. All he has to do is open his mouth. And when he opens his mouth, then it takes effect. And the armies of the, of the, of the Antichrist will totally be destroyed by his word. You want to destroy your enemy? Begin to use the word of God. Use the word of God. Regardless if you feel like it or not. Use the word of God. Because it's the only thing that destroys your enemy. He knows it. It is the sword of the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. He will smite the nations, and he shall rule them with rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. I know that God is love, but God is also an angry God towards sin. And you cannot play with God. He's not some puppet on a string that you can use him when you want to. And then when you don't want to put him aside, he is God Almighty. He is God. He is Lord. And if you don't obey him one day, right now you can experience the love of God. But the day is coming that if you continue to reject him, I don't know who you are. If you continue to reject him, you will receive the anger of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a brother at church. And he's one of those hot-blooded Portuguese. You know what I'm talking about. He says, if somebody does something to me, and they do something to my kid, I'll go over to his house, I'll beat the heck out of him, and I'll kill him if I have to. I said to him, yeah, and you're going to go to hell. He said, oh, no, I'm doing this because he did something wrong to my daughter and my son. No, no, you can't do that. you got to let the one that can do that. He is the righteous judge. He will be doing battle for you. He realized, and he said, you're right, Pastor. I can't do that. Hallelujah. Verse 16, please. I'm about to end. And he had on his vesture. And it is tied, tied. A name written, what? King of kings and Lord of lords. Three names. The first one, no one he knows. He's the only one that knows. The second one, he's the word of God. The third, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't know about you, but when you get to heaven, you're going to get a new name. <laughs> 
You know what else you're going to get in heaven? You're going to get a crown. There are five crowns that God is going to give away. I don't know which one I'm going to get, but I've got to get one. At least one, Lord. At least one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, give God some glory. King of kings. Lord of lords. Verse 17. Hallelujah. Shere Kondoro. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls, all the birds of the air that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Lord God. God is inviting through the angel, all the, the birds of the air. It's about a feast that I'm going to give you. You're going to eat all flesh. Hallelujah. Now watch what happens. Hallelujah. Could you go to the next verse, please? Hallelujah. And then it says that ye may eat the flesh of kings. Hey, kings. Hallelujah. What else? The flesh of captains, generals. Hallelujah. That come against God. Hallelujah. And the flesh of mighty men. And the flesh of horses. And of them that sit on them. And the flesh of all men, both free and born, both small and great. Hey, and that day, everybody's going to pay. It doesn't matter how much authority you have here. And that day, it's gone. Go to the next verse, please. And I saw the beast, the Antichrist. Look at this. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the white horse and against his army. Go to the next one, please. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Remember what I said. When you reject truth, you receive error. Look what it says here. Those that received the mark of the beast and they worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. A thousand years are going to pass and the false prophet and the antichrist will be in the lake of fire. Now watch, watch this, watch this. Go to the next one, please. Hallelujah. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. You see what I'm saying? His word, hallelujah. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit, hallelujah, and the great chain in his hand, hallelujah. Our enemy is about to be chained. Our enemy is about to be done away with. For a thousand years, he will not do anything. But after the thousand years, he will come out again. He will tempt again the world, hallelujah. But then it'll be the end. Hallelujah. He laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Let's stand, please. Pastor, what about us? During the thousand years, you and I will be reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Jesus will literally reign from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And you and I, in a spiritual body, a glorified body, hallelujah, praise God, we're going to reign with Jesus for a thousand years. And then after that, we're going to reign with him throughout eternity. I don't know about you, man, but it's worth it. It's worth it. To be rejected by this world, it's worth it. Because eternity awaits us. The King of Kings is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. But I'm waiting for the rapture. When the trump of God will sound. And 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we which are alive will be transformed in a twinkle of an eye. In other words, this belly that I have here, I won't have it no more. I'm going to be nice and fit. I'm going to have a glorified body. Hallelujah. Those teeth that are rotten, I'll have brand new teeth. Hallelujah. My hair that fell, I'm going to have it all back. Hallelujah. I won't be chubby like I am today. I'm going to have a perfect body. I mean, when my wife sees me there in heaven, said, Woo! So she's not going to be my wife anymore, but she'll know who I am. And when I look at you, Spirit of God. Don't need it anymore. We've got everything. <laughs> Would you please bow your heads? I want to pray for your children. I want to pray for your loved one that does not know the Lord. You don't have to come to the altar. You can stay right there because God can hear you where you are. I want you to present that child, that husband, that friend in school. Hallelujah. Present them to the Lord, the Lord of hosts. I know how many tears have fell, have rolled down your cheeks because of that child, that daughter of yours. I know it because I've been there. My oldest son is married today. He's got a wonderful wife, but he has nothing to do with the things of God. But you know what? I have the word of God, and I can proclaim salvation upon him. I know that one day he will come also. And I'm believing that God's going to bring your son and daughter, your husband. Oh. Thank you.